Welcome to Believe in Chargers. Another exciting week talking Chargers football. We're going to have the great Bucky Brooks uh, join us here in a couple minutes with Lorenzo Neal, the all world, all decade, all century, all history of football fullback who no doubt is living uh, his best life right now with the arrival of this coaching staff. Going to get into a couple more phase one interviews here in a, in a second low, but uh, the theme of, of offensive line, of physicality continues. Before we get into that, though, a huge thank you to all of you, the people, for downloading, for subscribing, for listening, for watching, uh, for liking, for commenting, all the things that you do, spreading the word about Believe in Chargers. We appreciate you. We thank you. And uh, wherever you may get it, it's part of the Believe Network. Uh, if it's YouTube, if it's pod, Apple Podcasts, if it's whatever your podcast platform of preference happens to be, thank you. We uh, we certainly appreciate you helping us move this thing forward as we get closer and closer to the end of April and the NFL draft. And in quite a few, at least nine, maybe more, uh, new faces make their way into this roster and, uh, and an image that we just had it, low. I'll give the floor to you. We just had Marcus Brady. Um, we just had Andy Bischoff and Gus Edwards. We're our three pressers this week talking about phase one and the brand of football they want to play. And it's a continued theme from what we had last week when we talked about Ben Herbert and Jim Harbaugh. And that's, we're an offensive line team. We're a physical team. We're going to pound the football. We're going to punish people. And that's what we're, that's what we're coming to do for 60 minutes on Sundays. No question. You hear that money all the time. Everybody they put up at the presser, it's already, you can see already the hardball effect starting to trickle down. Everyone's talking about how physical they're going to do. They're going to run the ball. They're going to be making, try to play mistake free football. Gus is going to have, you know, big shoes. He's going to have to go ahead and run the ball, be physical. And he's praising his offensive line, what we're going to do up front. So it's just exciting times. And man, and I can't wait to ask Bucky, what does he think? How is this team with hardball? Can he change the whole mindset? Because you know who hardball's mindset. How does he get these players to get on that same page? Can't wait to ask Bucky a lot of questions. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, and I'll just kind of get into Andy Bischoff's presser because he was sort of the, the headliner for those that don't know. Andy is the the tight ends coach. He's the run game coordinator. So, you know, Greg Roman's your OC, and Greg Roman is really – focused a lot on the run game and how they're going to block it and how they're going to run it and who's involved, what the personnel is, all those things. Uh, Greg is leading that charge. Marcus Brady was hired to be the pass game coordinator. Um, so he's a folk. He and Shane Day are going to be involved a little bit more throwing the football with Jim Harbaugh, you know, Shane Day, the quarterback's coach with Herbert and all of that. So it was great to kind of get the, the two perspectives. But it's funny, the Passing game coordinator was talking more about running the ball <laughs> and how running the ball is going to set up a balanced offense and it's going to set up the ability to have a, a more complete offense and a better passing game because when you can run the ball effectively, uh, that's only going to benefit um, what what you're going to do through the air. But I'll, I'll, I'll kind of focus on this real quick, Lo, and just get your take. The one like the one thing that there were well, there were two things that jumped out from 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 Coach Bischoff's presser. Um, one was him saying, we value O-linemen here, just so you know. Uh, it, it starts with the O-line. We're going to be an O-line friendly organization. And he basically said, I think he said, actually, not basically, he said, you know, other places don't value it as much, but we do. We are an O-line centric football team, and it's where O-linemen are going to want to play, and it's how we're going to play. That was sort of the, him. If Ben Herbert set the tone last week, about saying, I'm going to make these guys harder to break. And that was kind of the one thing that a lot of people took out of that. Um, I think the one thing that, that Coach Bischoff said that probably people take away is that other people don't value it. We do. If you're an offensive lineman, you're going to want to play football here. No question. I love that. When I hear Ben, when you hear Harbaugh, the strength coach, that's what I, that, that's what got me fired up. No money we talk about, man, why am I intense about this? Because it's my or football. I understand you can't play. I really believe you cannot play basketball in the grass and win on a consistent basis. You know, Mahomes, there's only one Mahomes. But you even watch the Patriots. They ran the ball. When you look at good teams, you've got to have that. And that's what Hardball, he's saying, look, we are going to run the ball. If you're an offensive lineman, you want to you want to make some money, you come here to the L.A. Chargers because you're going to have the opportunity to get so much tape. Because guys pass block, but when they see you create a new line of scrimmage and you're pushing guys off, when they see an ace block, when it's, you know, the, the you know a trade block, when the tight end and the tackle, they tray up to the linebacker and ace block, when the center and guard, you know, up to the middle linebacker, when they see that stuff starting to transpire and they're butt the button, they're foot the foot and they're getting each foot and putting the foot in the ground and they're creating a new line of scrimmage, money, that's what teams say. Oh my God, look at those guys. 
That's how free agency, and guys, when they're up now, guys, we want that guy. Why? Because they're fundamentally sound. That's what I love about this presser. It's about we are going to be tough. We are going to be physical because they're not worried about the pass game because there's nothing elite about the pass game. It's because the run game, guys are hats going to be look because it looks like run. The defense got to suck up, play single high safety, and the routes are going to be simple. It's not going to change, but you're going to be efficient because of the run game. I love it. Yeah, credit card alignment team a record. That's what they're uh, that's what they're going to be. Um, Bet online, your number one source, and we love Bet online. We appreciate Bet online. We want you to love it as well. It's your source for all summer sports this season, from the MLB to golf to NBA. And by the way, look, we got a big one in golf this like week, it. as a matter of fact. NHL, all the playoffs, bet online's where you want to be. They got the latest stats there, the news, the scores, all available to follow your favorite teams, get the latest odds and lines, including the latest team matchups, player props, and odds on just about every sport out there. You can head to the website today or use your mobile device to get in on the action. Again, it is bet online where the game starts. All right, Lo. Well, one of our favorites, uh, somebody that uh, has been through the wars with with me. Uh, all seven rounds, every single pick, <laughs> eight hours a day on the field at the Combine, every single 40. We did it for years at a time. We had friends designate who their favorite prospects were, only to be wildly disappointed in the moment, which is why you never stick your neck out for anyone. And let me tell you something, Lo. If you want to interview someone, oh my God, maybe a defensive lineman after they've been through an extensive workout and they choose to wear a half leather, half old jacket <laughs> to the table, Buffy fully is your sweating, guy. Fully sweating, <laughs> fully sweating, Sam Montgomery, fully dressed out doing? like he's in a sauna trying to talk to us. Uh, but, <laughs> oh my God, he's the best. Oh he does gosh. it for move the oh sticks. Uh, he did it on the field for for a half decade in the league, won a Super oh. Bowl with the Packers, and of course then did it in the front offices of the Panthers, the Seahawks, to name a few. And now he does it with Daniel Jeremiah on move the sticks. Mm-hmm. It's a great time to pay attention to what Bucky Brooks is doing. And, low because I know you'll appreciate this, uh, and everybody listening, if they're not familiar, we love high school football here. And Bucky, uh, <laughs> Bucky was able to guide his Granada Hills squad all the way up to the state championship. There we go. By running the ball. And when I say running the ball, I mean they didn't throw it once. Running the ball all the way to the state championship game. So Bucky, it's great fine. to have you, man. Hey, man, what's, I'm, what's going on? I'm, I'm excited to be <laughs> on. I got two of my favorite guys on. I have Money, who we've done everything with. And then... <laughs> We have the, I would say, the fullback extraordinaire, Low Neal, who not only played for the Chargers, but played for darn near every team known to man lead blocking for, for guys until he just got tired of just blocking. I've never seen someone block for 20 years. And then, you know what? I'm, I'm just done. I'm just done being a lead blocker. So, um, I'm like, I was like force. I, hey, Bucky, I was like force. You know, just running, running, running. So, running. So, I'm done. So, 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 Low, I know. There's a lot of excitement about the Chargers. Please don't go knocking on Jim Harbaugh's door talking about, Coach, I got another year left up in me because you know they're going to run the power. Please, like, please, money, keep him away from Harbaugh's door. I don't want oh, yeah, low, look, I don't want low thinking that Marty Ball 2 is coming back. Even though it is, just don't let low be a part of it. <laughs> yeah, I'll, well, I'll tell you, uh, Buck. After after the introductory phase one pressers oh my with uh, with Jim Harbaugh and Ben Herbert, oh, I, I think I think Lowe thought about hopping oh, in that man. car and driving down and making oh, his way man. down. He was he was geeked. Last week was the most excited we've ever seen Lowe on this pod and in, in this show. And I'll I'll start there, man, because you're someone that took mm-hmm. over a program and said, "Hey, this is the way we're going to play football." I see a lane where we can dominate. You had to sell it to the kids. You had to get the right personnel in. How hard is it to do that? Because it certainly sounds like that's what Jim Harbaugh and Greg Roman want to do here with these Chargers. So what's funny about it all, money, the program and the and and the person that I looked to was Jim Harbaugh. And the reason it was is because we saw it front and center. We saw it at University of San Diego. We saw him go to Stanford and make Stanford um, the bullies in the Pac-12 when no one viewed Stanford like that. We saw him take the San Francisco 49ers from the bottom to the top, running the football. And then we we just saw what he did in Michigan. And so when you think about the success that he had, the blueprint is there. 
we already know what the blueprint is going to be. He goes and brings, uh, like, he brings the gang back together, right? Greg Roman comes back. We know where Greg Roman is. We know what kind of physical football team they have been able to put together when they are together. The young defensive coaches that he has assembled, uh, he goes and gets the strength coach. And everyone who has been around Jim Harbaugh knows that the lifeblood of the program is what they do in the weight room. And for the strength coach to one have a press conference, I don't think I've ever seen a strength and conditioning coach have 30 minutes where he outlines the program and he talks about how we're going to harden them, how we're going to make them harder. I mean, I set up, you talk about low uh, being excited trying to drive down. I might have did some extra crunches saying, hey, I got to get ready. I got to get ready to see the charges because look, and anyone who has been around pro football knows that like some teams opt for the Jane Fonda workout program, right? The whole thing is just to make sure don't get anybody hurt or whatever. But what I heard from them, oh, we're going to treat the weight room like college. Like we're going to run, we're going to lift, we're going to do that. I'm going to tell you right now, if they put it together like that, it is a huge advantage in pro football because the most physical team wins. And if they're committed to doing everything to make the Chargers a very physical team, they're absolutely going to win a bunch of games. With that being said, Bucky, I, I love your ad because that's why I wanted to run through walls. And that's why I'm like, my God, I wish I was, you know, a little bit younger, wish I was a little bit taller. You know, I would be out there. <laughs> you know, but how do you how do you create that? Or see, it's it's different. You and I, we both know that you're going to have guys that talk about it and you have coaches talk about it. But how do you be about it? That's the thing that I think is unbelievable about Harbaugh. What is it that makes these coaches think that way, but then to ex to actually execute it, to make it happen? That doesn't happen consistently in the national book. What is it about the culture and the program that builds that throughout the, throughout the program? I think, one, he's an A-plus leader. I think he's an exceptional leader. I think he has rare qualities when it comes to it. People are talking about the quirkiness and all that on the outside. But when you hear his players talk about him, they revere him everywhere. Stanford, you talk to the Niners players that have played for him. You talk to the Michigan players. I mean, you just look at that Michigan team that went through all the stuff they went through the regular season to win the Natty. They talked about keeping it together and the bond and the brotherhood or whatever. I think Jim Harbaugh is uniquely qualified to lead a pro locker room because, one, he comes with instant credibility. He's a former player a quarterback who we've seen play. Captain Comeback, when is in Indianapolis, you saw him play for the Chargers. We have seen him play at a high level. He has that connection where he can say, hey, guys, I've been here just like that. So here's what I know. I've been around great coaches, and the great coaches have told me this is how we have to build the team. And they buy in. I can see the enthusiasm just on social media, just tracking, looking at the all-season program. I mean, I see dudes, everybody seems like they're in attendance. <laughs> everybody is there. There is something that he – Look, it's just the way that he talks about it. And then people have seen that the results work. So he doesn't have to kind of go through the process that most new coaches have to go through, like selling the program. Hey, if we do this, it works. Look, they have tangible evidence to know that it works because he's won everywhere that he's been. You know, Buck, with the the draft coming up and, and obviously you're neck deep in it right now, you got the number five overall pick and we, we are trying to walk this line, right, of understanding that, it's it's a spread it out and throw it around league. You've got an elite quarterback in Justin Herbert. You know what the fans want because you're in the middle of it too mm -hmm. when you do your mock drafts, and I'm sure you hear mm -hmm. from, from them. They want Malik Neighbors mm -hmm. or they want Marvin Harrison Jr. But it's just so hard to see one person after another walk up to that lectern and talk about we value offensive linemen. You know, we we are going to be a physical team. We are going, you know, Jim Harbaugh at the owners meetings, offensive line. What's the one group that doesn't need help from anybody else, but everybody needs help from them. It just it seems like on your board and, and share mm -hmm. with us kind of where you have it all lined up, that if you take best available player and Marvin Harrison Jr. or Roma Dunze or Malik Neighbors are there, that's going to be the best available player. But it just doesn't seem like that's the way that this team wants to operate. So. How do you get those two things to marry up, if if at all they do? I I can't imagine, given the lectures that we've had from Jim Harbaugh, that the first pick of the Jim Harbaugh era is going to be a pass catch. I it, like it to me, and I love Marvin Harrison Jr. I like Roma Dunze. I like Malik Neighbors. It is hard for me to believe after he gave a dissertation on how the offensive line makes everybody in the building better that they're not going to be a line of scrimmage team. And I go back to. And, and money we talked about, like when, when he was at Stanford, 
they couldn't put enough offensive linemen on the field. Eight, nine offensive linemen lined up in the I formation, and they're saying we're going to run the power to the right, and they run it. I can't imagine them not. I wouldn't be surprised if they double up the first two rounds and take multiple offensive linemen because he is going to establish himself as the brand. And I think he relishes the opportunity to do this because the Kansas City Chiefs are, have been the bully of the division. And I think he puts a target on their back, just like he put USC, and they're going to walk over and they're going to walk in the Arrowhead Stadium. And their first 12 plays may be runs because he is going to establish that. So to me, I, I would almost put my entire paycheck that that first pick will not be a pass catcher. It's going to be someone that is at the line of scrimmage. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, I'm with you there. Me and Money, we go back and forth. One day I'm like, okay, it's a receiver. Next day it's like, okay, they're trading back and going to get a several offensive linemen or defensive linemen because that's just the way his mantra is hardball. You talked about what he did at Stanford. You look at the Niners, just Crabtree, just had a guy, didn't have a great receiver. It doesn't seem like Harbaugh's philosophy is you need a great receiver to win in this in this league. No, because Lorenzo, the better the quarterback, the lesser the need to have an elite wide receiver. If we're talking about Justin Herbert being one of those guys, and I think everyone will say that if we rank in the top five, he's in the top five somewhere. And if he's a top five quarterback, well, yeah, you don't have to go out and get him A-plus receivers. What you want to do is make sure that that offensive line is at an A-plus level. So now he has the ability to not only throw uh, behind a fortress, but they can run the football. And we have to understand that even though, like, every all the talking heads were talking about, it's a throwing league and all that other stuff. It is. But you want to be able to dictate the terms. And the easiest way to dictate the terms for a quarterback is to be able to run the football, force people into single high coverage, one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, and then it is seven-on-seven. Seven. It is just pitch and catch all day. I think that's the kind of team that he wants. He won't neglect the passing game, but I think Jim Harbaugh is uniquely qualified to understand that I can make the life of the quarterback so much easier if we have a top-five running game with a top-five offensive line dominating in the trenches. So, you know, Buck, obviously, you know how good Rashawn Slater is. Last year, he had two ankles for the majority of the year, and he finally kind of got healthy toward the end of the year. And you could see, it's like, oh, yeah, that's that's what Rashawn Slater mm -hmm. looks like by week 16, 17, 18. You got that locked up. Um, you kind of know they're at five. Everybody seems to have Minnesota circled. And and maybe, you know, we discussed mm -hmm. this a couple weeks ago. Maybe they trade up with Arizona, and then Arizona says, hey, we'll give you 11 and 27. We're just going to move up to 23 from those, those picks. And now you still – you know what I'm getting at? You still mm -hmm. have two first-rounders. That's kind of what a lot of people are thinking of how this thing could work. So if, if that's the case, if in fact and, – and it feels like they want to trade back. If it's 11, and let's just say it's 27, or maybe they pick up their two and their mm -hmm. late three, something like that. Give us an idea of what that looks like. Like which old lineman do you think taps into the style that they want to play at 11? And if they are going to take a second one, or who you would, or would you take a corner? Or would you take the D? Would you take Byron Murphy? Because you need both lines, right? It's a line of scrimmage team. Like what? What are you doing? Let's say it's eleven twenty-seven. What are you doing with those picks? Money. The first <laughs> pick of the Jim Harbaugh era has to be an offensive line, and I actually believe that if they do trade down and they they land at eleven, I just have visions of Jim Harbaugh just kind of trekking up to the Pacific Northwest and looking at the guy from Oregon State, Fuaga, and being like, you know, Talise. We just want someone who just throws all guys who are inappropriately dressed out of the club. And I just think <laughs> I can just see him at right tackle just just forklifting dudes as they're trying to run the ball with Gus Edwards coming downhill. Uh, I think he would be – look, I, I, I could see him being the pick at five. Even though we talk about Joe Alt, there's something about just that physicality that Puaga brings that, that works. But they're lucky because in this class – there are a bunch of offensive tackles that qualify. And so if he goes down even later, I think he can find a way to make it work with Amarius Mims. You know, I just feel like the offensive lineman that's going to be selected, though, is going to be more of a mauler, brawler, road grader type than the dancing bear on the edge that is more comfortable in pass protection. What do you say to those, Bucky, that says, hey, look, look in Baltimore, it's not working. The run game, yeah, you'll get so far and then – it, you, you have to have a lead pass. How do, how, how do you, what do you, what do you, how do you discredit or say, look, Harbaugh's going to do it this way. I know it's two Harbaugh brothers, but what is, what do you say to those to give you that narrative? See, I believe like the Baltimore Ravens messed up when they changed their style. I believe that they were a unique, unorthodox team that was hard to prepare for when Greg Roman was, was running the office. And I believe that they listened to the outside noise and made a bad decision. Munkin is fine, and their offense is fine, but I don't think they give you the same kind of um, 
problems that they did previously. The difference to me with Harbaugh, I think Harbaugh can kind of fill in the voids that Greg Roman may not have when it comes to the passing game. We as coaches have strengths and weaknesses when it comes to it. So Harbaugh may be able to say, hey, you take care of the run game. You got all that. I can help you figure out the passing game. And let's be honest. I believe Justin Herbert is a much better passer than Lamar Jackson. That also right. does it. This gives them a chance to run the offense that they ran more at Stanford than the offense that Roman may have run at Baltimore. This is more downhill, traditional, eye formation, old school play action passes, work in the middle of the field and outside, more so than what we saw from Baltimore. But it's going to be a steady diet of run game. And we know that Jim Harbaugh knows how to make the game easy for the quarterbacks. Look at what he did with Alex Smith and others. Will you run him? Will you run Justin? Do you think Justin Smith, did you, if you look at Herbert, will he run the ball? Uh, no, only on scrambles. But I don't think – I don't think it's about him pulling it and running zone reads and those things. Uh, I think he uses him just like Andrew Luck was used. And Andrew Luck would run and do those things. Now, he was different because he had the linebacker mentality. He would run and try and punish people. But I don't think he uses Justin Herbert like that. That athleticism is an added treat. But it's about the run game, play action. He may scramble. But it's not about him going and trying to do the Lamar Jackson stuff. I think it's more of a traditional old school running game that – they line up in old school sets where you're at fullback and someone's at back and they play action and they take deep shots. I think you'll see the yards per attempt go up because the shots are farther down the field more so than the dink and dunk passing game and that stuff. We're so focused uh, on offense, Bucky, just because, you know, it's just kind of the way the, the league is. But you have Justin Herbert and you have mm-hmm. Jim Harbaugh, who was a former quarterback. And I think people get excited about what he might be able to, to pull out of him, the success. Um, but, I mean, you can argue that – well, you can argue. I mean, you, you can't argue it. It's it's undoubtedly the defense was as important to Michigan's dominance as the mm-hmm. offense and what Jesse Minter was able to do. <clears throat> when you're sitting in the draft room – and it seems like everybody is focused on these wide receivers and these offensive linemen. Can you then extract, do you talk about extracting value if it's like, you know what, we're going to get a better play. If we just focus defense, mm-hmm. all these guys are taking O-linemen and wide receivers, and here we got Dallas Turner or Terry and Arnold or Quinya Mitchell sitting right here at 11, and we've got this line, these linebackers in, in the second mm-hmm. and third. Does it make more sense? Because we know how much – this defense needs I mean it is that cornerback room needs help that D line room needs help that linebacker room is there a path there like in terms of what your grades are on these players could they go D line interior D lineman or or edge first and then corner and then linebacker in the second round like does that make more sense in terms of what this draft has to offer the only pick that I would commit to be an offensive player would be the first one because they could they would have their opportunity to get the best offensive lineman or if for whatever reason they got to watch, they get the best of whatever they wanted. Outside of that, then you can drop down and take, um, whether it's your pass rusher, your interior player, or your cornerback. I would say that if you're thinking about the quarterback, because he's always kind of like fond over Justin Herbert, I think you want to make sure you take care of him first, and then you build it out from there. But like the pass rushers, the kid from UCLA, Latu, Latu, Latu will be available. And he is about as pure a pass rusher as I've seen in a long time. He has the injury issues that could be a concern, but that could play in the Chargers favor because maybe he drops and is available in the twenties. Uh, you talk about these, this class of cornerback. I mean, people are talking about Quinion Mitchell flying off the board and he may be gone, but Terry and Arnold could be there. Kool-Aid McKinstry, uh, Ennis, Rekestraw, all of those guys kind of play the style that you would think that Jim Harbaugh wants to play. And also Jesse Minner, like, they did a lot of different things at Michigan, but they were more eyes on the quarterback, vision-based, uh, simulated pressures and those things. Yeah, they they can build up their defense without the first pick of the draft necessarily being a defense player, even though if they did choose to zig when everyone else is zagging, I can't fault them because the two pass rushes that they have, Khalil Mack is older, Joey Bosa is getting older, but he's been beat up. They have to have a young guy in place anyway to be able to hunt the quarterback. When you think about not just the quarterback position, but, you know, guys you know, run the ball. We look at the running back position. You think about how it's, you know, they're not as paid as high. A position to me that's starting to creep up, the tight end position. When you think about what Kansas City, they didn't do it with receivers. It's tight end. You think about Detroit with their tight end. Is a tight end becoming just as more as focus point as receivers in this league? And if so, why? 
uh, it's becoming a focal point because you're getting better athletes at the position. It's the easiest throw for the quarterback because you're working right over the middle of the field in between the hashes. If you have the big body, he can post up those little DBs. He's fast enough to move away from linebackers. It's probably the easiest position to create mismatches. As it relates to the charges, just think about all the tight ends that came out of Stanford during that time. I mean, Stanford was tight in you at the beginning and through the middle of the Jim Har- Harbaugh era. And then it continued when David Shaw was there, but all those were a lot of Harbaugh recruits. He understands the value of the tight end because it not only gives you that stuff in the passing game, but the toughest matchup defensively is dealing with 12 personnel, 12 and 13 personnel. One back, two or three tight ends. You can cobble those formations in a bunch of different ways to create balance and unbalanced formations. How do you line up? How do you handle the strength calls and all of that? It is, look, like the, the sick and twisted, the minute mind of Jim Harbaugh. He loves just kind of like messing with defensive coordinators with all of those things. Yeah, I can see it being a big, a big part. And let's be honest, man, the Chargers haven't had like one of those premier tight ends for a long, like a premier old school wide tight end that can block, that can do all that. They now have assembled some blockers where they feel good about. But man, another guy that could do some things in the passing game would give them some advantages. Last thing, Buck, and uh, we know you're busy. It's, uh, it's that time a year you'll be doing it for NFL Network, NFL Plus, NFL.com. Um, all the great stuff that you do in draft season is uh, we're just a couple weeks out now from this thing actually firing off. Um, so I'll finish with, you know, two of the, I hate saying it because they're all premium positions, but th- the non-premium positions that you can find value in that third, fourth, fifth round uh, in both positions of need, running back and linebacker. And, and, you know, I don't want to put you on the spot, just mm-hmm. a couple names. So I'll just draw out a couple names just in terms of uh, linebacker. Like to me, Peyton Watson, if I know he's beat to hell, but it just feels like that may cause him to slide down. Oh, tell me about smart players. Tell me about Peyton, Peyton Wilson. Peyton Wilson, I'm sorry. I keep from NC Peyton State? Favorite. Exactly, from NC State. My, so arguably, yes, get into that. Arguably my favorite player in the draft. And I wow. am, I'm disappointed because – he grew up on the in the backyard of North Carolina in Chapel Hill. Um, he goes and 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 money. The thing about Wilson is, I mean, he stuffs this. I mean, his stats from college are ridiculous when it comes to sacks, interceptions, tackle for loss, former recoveries, all that stuff. You see him on tape and you're like, man, this dude is amazing. He's all over the field. Then he goes to the combine and blows it up, runs in the four fours. You see him jump high. He, he's explosive. And now you're beginning to be like, man, this is like a this is like a first round player. You know, this is, look, however you want to say it, this is a Luke Keekly type player. Wow. That might be available in the 20s to be able to do it. And I know we're at a time where people are kind of, oh, I don't know about the off ball linebacker. I'm going to say this there hasn't been a, a, a linebacker for the Chargers that has been like impactful for a long time. The guy that can kind of put everybody on their back and kind of get them going their way. Peyton Wilson's one sure. of those guys. You can feel him. And he's wow. you can just look at him and in interviews, he's that like the reason why we talk about Luke Keekley, because Luke Keekley comes off nice, has his glasses on, then you put the <laughs> helmet on, he's a different animal. Peyton Wilson is wired like that. Like when you watch wow. him on tape, he has some of that old school dirt bag that 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 you kind of like, hey, don't do that, but good play. Like he has some of that in him. He he's a really good player, man. If not for the injuries, we'd be talking about him as like a top 15, top 20 selection. Amazing. When you think about just Harbaugh and just the, the, the new aura that the Chargers are going to present with Harbaugh, what is ex, what is reasonable expectations? Because you hear, man, Harbaugh's in town. It should people temper back? How do you think he does in his first year? What is realistic expectation in your mind? Oh, they get right into the mix. They're, they're playoff bound. They are going toe-to-toe with the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, the expectation would be that he takes a team that, let's be honest, like people around the league would regard – regard as soft, right? They regard as, yep. and he addressed it right on, don't let the powder blues fool you. So what he's going to do is he is going to spend the entire off season kind of just, just kind of poking the bear a little bit about their softness and we're going to be more physical and we're going to take them into the deep end and that stuff. And that right there is going to put them at 11, maybe 12 wins. And if they get in the tournament, just kind of knowing how they do it, because the win in the tournament, you got to have an elite quarterback and you got to be able to dominate in the trenches. How they build this offensive and defensive line going forward will determine how far they can go. But my expectation is they're in the tournament and they're making life miserable for opponents. 
What do we got for uh, Granada Hills this year, Buck? What's happening? Well, you know, it's the, it's the same old thing. We got a bunch of guys in the party. We got a bunch of young guys, but just like the Chargers get into it, like you guys will be excited. Lowe will be excited to know that we were out there doing hundreds and we're running we're running the Granada Mile like they used to run the Michigan Mile. And, you know, we're just running and we're lifting weights and we're power cleaning and deadlifting. And that's what it is. And we're doing it every day. And, you know, the fun stuff is like we may not be the most talented, but we're going to. We can make sure you, you feel us. I think just how Jim Harbaugh talks about it. You, you'll feel us go. by the end of the game. So, um, <laughs> you see Lowe's. You see Lowe's neck there. Uh, I do you see that neck. I see it. You see that hey, neck. Hey, I see hey, it. Hey, Buck, I'm gonna come. To, I'm gonna come train with you guys, so you guys can get me ready for retirement. I'll be like George Foreman. I'll oh. come out and you let me know, Buck. Get me there, so you can beat so, me up and see, see where I'm at. Hey, so so so, so money. I noticed like he increasingly moved from the back of his seat to like being. Yep. Like he, he yeah. he's, he's like, so, 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 so when y'all have those production meetings and all that other stuff with Harvard money, I'm telling you, you sit beside him and make sure you put your arm just to keep, cause low, low, we're going to look exactly. up and Lowe's going to run out right. to one of those training camp practices. He's going to be suited right. up and we're going to be like, what in the world? Who, who, who's and, the uh, player they let onto the field? Right. When uh, when Harbaugh will finish with this, Buck, when Harbaugh was given his his uh, phase one presser and, you know, was making the rounds and a lot of people got excited about it. I don't know if you remember, but he, he had a, uh, a dichotomy, a dichotomy of the, the two types of people. And he said, you know, what, what do you want? What do you want in your back? What do you want that neck to be? You want it to be a steel rod? <laughs> when he said that, he looked at low and, he like, yeah, nod, and then he goes, what do you want it to be all nudity? He looked at me. He looked at me. I was like, come on, man. I'm trying. And Lowe just said, I got to start doing more yes no's. He oh. goes, uh, he's like, come on, man. You got to do your yes no's, man. Hey, hey, Get money. It done. Hey, mo- hey, money. I think you're going to have to spend two or three days a week down there in the weight room. I think you're going to have to let right. my man put you right down on the seat and kind of some of those neck exercises that we used to do back yes. in the day and just kind of the yes. neck resistance yes. and some yes no's and money before yes. you know it, you're going to dwarf DJ. Yeah. Your neck is going to be all thick. Oh, yeah. You, you're going to be popping out that polo shirt. Ready to go. Yeah. Get Bucky, money. I, Bucks getting you right, money. Bucks getting yeah. you right. Yeah. I get into the weight room. I walk into the weight room. Guess what happens? They're going to hand me a bucket, a mop, and some Windex. And well, say, thanks for coming. Well, Start well, cleaning up. Well, you know what? Polishing. You'll fit in because I heard how Strength Ghost likes it tidy right. in there. He likes he it really clean. How you do anything is right. how you do everything. Sweep the corners, all that other yes. stuff. Yes. Right. Wax off, so, wax off. Hey, right. Right. hey so now I'm going to say this, and I, and I was going to say this because Lowe knows. Look, the charges in my mind have not been the same since the end of the Marty Ball era, right? I just remember going down. I just started Scott. I played for Marty in Kansas City, but I remember when LT was in his prime, and they are running power, power O, downhill, over and over and over again. And when Marty left, he was fourteen and two. So the charges people understand when they have committed to running and being a physical team, the rewards have been outstanding. Didn't get it done with Marty for whatever reason. If he just stays, they probably end up winning it. But I'm telling you, if he goes back to that, no one wants to see those charges. They don't want to see that style from the charges. It's problematic. Well, you know, they're going back to it, uh, you know, because we just heard Will Disley, uh, there's three guys that can block the C gap, and Will Disley's one of them. I mean, that's like people are get like, that's, they want us to be excited about that. Like, what, Will? Will? Oh, there's three guys in this league that can block the C gap, and he's one of them. Oh, you yeah. know, we got him. And we got them. Like that's they're legitimately excited about that. Oh, they're gonna run the football. Oh, the, that first preseason game, you may not see a pass, money. I'm telling you, you may not see a pass to the second quarter. Good, run the clock. <laughs> run the clock. Preseason. <laughs> Good, run the clock. I run the wanna, clock. Let's it's, go. It's, it's preseason. It's let's preseason get you. game. Let's go. Let's go. Straight runs. Come on, man. Bring Baltimore out. Let, and we'll go to Baltimore. We'll just play them three times, and let's just let's just run it, man. That's a preseason game? You kidding me? <laughs> San Francisco. That's who I want. I want San Francisco and Baltimore twice, and let's just run that out of the ball. Game would be over in two hours. Game would be over exactly. two hours. Two hours. Exactly right. <laughs> I'm done. Done and done. Uh, Buck, you're the best. You can follow yeah. him on all the social media channels. Be sure to check him out on uh, NFL Network, NFL Plus, NFL.com, and follow. Granada Hills. It is one of the most entertaining high school football teams oh, out there man. because everybody else is zigged and they are the only team that zagged and they took it all the way to the state championship last year. So may you do it again, Buck. You're the best. Uh, oh, man. Thanks for having me. That was fun. 
Huge thank you to Bucky Brooks again. Just the best of the best. What an awesome conversation to have. We'll try to get a couple more people in here uh, over the next few weeks as the draft approaches or following the draft to react to all the players that the Chargers took. And a reminder about Cut, K-U-T-T, social betting platform. Uh, Use our code, Believe, B-L-E-A-V, Chargers. Believe Chargers. That's going to get you a 10% deposit bonus. What is cut? It is peer-to-peer betting platform that allows you to bet directly against your friends, other fans, your coworkers. You want to set something up, a peer-to-peer, and it doesn't have to be a, a sporting game, a professional sporting event. It could be anything you want. Who runs the fastest 40? Who's going to get home the fastest and uh, and log on to the Zoom? Whatever you want to bet on, that is what Cut does. Bet directly against each other. It's the ultimate put-your-money-where-your-mouth-is platform. It's legal all over the place. And uh, be sure to follow at CutBet, K-U-T-T-B-E-T, on all your social media channels, download the app via the App Store or cut KUTT.com. Again, use our code Believe Chargers, B L E A V Chargers, for a 10% deposit bonus. Uh, Lo, I want to finish with this, if you uh, if you don't mind, because I think there's so much football lingo and people don't ever want to seem like they don't know everything or what's going on. But one of the things that um that Coach Bischoff said was uh, about Ben Mason and the signing of Ben Mason is because he kind of mentioned that he was going to be in the tight end room. But then he said, no, he's going to be an F, and we're going to use him as an F. So as uh, as a former fullback, if you could kind of share with what you think the vision is, he's sitting in the tight end room, uh, he'll be sitting in the running back room in both, and the way that he was described was as a traditional F. What does that mean for what Ben Mason's going to do with the Chargers? Yeah, I think that you've seen we've got a traditional F, even though he's in a tight end, you want to be able to move him. At times, money, you know, you go Faye motion. That means the fullback going toward the Y. Faye, Fox means the fullback motions toward the X. So you have these different formations with the fullback in the game that he's going to be actually go out and play at a tight end position, at a receiver position. So you have these motions. So you have a guy now that can make it move as well as line up and block that, you know, in coming off the edge, block that C gap, block the A gap. When you get a hard call where the center, it has to go down. When you see if the linebacker's at a position and they say hard, that means the, the linebacker walked up. So it's hard position. That means that the now the guard has to go down because the linebacker's up in the A gap. So now the fullback has to block the offensive guard, man, the guy that's playing that three technique because the, the linebackers in that A-gap, if you don't block him, the running back can't get there. So that's when the center makes a hard call. Now the guard has to go down. Now the fullback has to block the man that the guard is. So you have a guy that can handle those hard calls and the different things. So I like that they have an F, and I like that they're going to be able to move him around so he's able to play fullback as well as H. Now, two things <clears throat> there that, that pop into my mind is, one, what Jim Harbaugh said, what's good for the hive is good for the bee. That's what that's all about, right? And two, the basketball, you know, as someone that worked with the Lakers for all those years, you know, something that Kurt Rambis, who was the defensive coach yep. of the Lakers, used to say, help the helper. And the guy that's helping the helper is who needs your help. And that's what sure. it's all about. It's there's there's a void, and we constantly have to fill that void. And that's how you find success, is making sure that there are as few voids to be exploited as possible. And, uh, no and that question. seemed to be... What you're talking about, what Coach was talking about, be sure to check out Chargers.com. You want to pull up all those pressers and uh, kind of get into and dig into what what we were listening to. But uh, beyond that, a huge thank you to all of you again for for downloading, listening, subscribing, commenting, however you may consume Believe in Chargers. We certainly appreciate you. We'll be back again next week and getting closer, a heck of a lot closer until the NFL draft and all excited about our brand new toys we get to unwrap and think about how they're all going to fit in in 2024. Appreciate you, Lope. Let's go Chargers, baby. Let's go. Bolt up. 